recently that there are a number of videos, great videos, that show different techniques for the best salvage treatment, including my own video. But when we show these techniques, we show them in slow motion so that you can get the technique. And it occurred to me that it might convey the idea that you need to be ever so careful and slow about your weaving to get good edges. And that is not really the intention. The idea is that you get the concept for mastering your salvages and then find your own flow to weave at a reasonable pace. So I thought I would show you what happens when you do get that rhythm. Now, I am not, this is not a race, I am not working at what you might call high speed, but at a steady pace, not fussing too much over my edges. And I favor the stick shell because it holds a lot of yarn. I don't mind winding it. Makes it all the way through the shed. Notice I am using the term throw literally because with a wide warp, give it a little flick and you're even more efficient. So while I'm not working at high speed, I always say we proceed slowly, but our weaving advances rapidly because if you do get in to that rhythm, you'll find that you're making cloth fairly quickly. Most of the weaving I do for garments, I probably have no more than an hour and a half invested in the weaving total. Now, if you're also a knitter, as I am, that is really phenomenal. No way you can knit a sweater in an hour and a half, right? Now, some people prefer boat shuttles. I have one. I never use it um, because, as I mentioned, I favor the stick. Uh, my thing with the boat shuttle is uh, most of our yarns are a little heavier than this one I'm using, this fingering weight warp and weft, and it just requires too much bobbin winding. Perhaps if you own a automatic bobbin winder, an automated bobbin winder, you would like your boat shuttle better. Also, I find that not all of our warps can hold the boat shuttle effectively as you throw it across. But some people swear by them, so you may want to try that if you're curious. So you can see that I'm not fussing too much with my salvages. And if you watched my video, on improving your rigid heddle weaving part two, you will note that, you will note my technique is throw it, drop it, set it, beat it. Also, your loom on the stand might be just a little more stable than mine because I ended up taking the supporting beams off from the sides because I move my loom frequently and store it away like this and I don't like to stop and mess with the side braces so it doesn't bother me but if you question why I have no side braces on my stand now you know now I also mentioned in that other video about salvages that color and weight of the yarn can affect the quality of your work. Notice that here on the left side, I have mostly medium blue on medium blue. And that's my best salvage edge. On the right, occasionally, you're going to see the little dots show up because here I have medium blue on white. When there's more contrast, don't expect to get as good a salvage edge. And you notice I'm only beating one time. 
I have to give this a firm beat because when you're working with cottons and linens, this is a 100% cotton morphin left, it tends to be a beat it and when you change the shed, the, the, the weft thread can bounce back at you a little bit. So even though this is for something wearable and I don't want stiff fabric because it is a plant fiber, needs a little firmer beat in this case. Now the other thing is we all get caught up once in a while on our loom mechanism. And if you can, try to be conscious of your weft. Oops, you won't even beat there. Correction. Try to be conscious of your weft, the dangling part. If you can keep it forward of the mechanism, it will save you some time with that entanglement. So here's to hoping you find your flow in your weaving. And happy weaving, my friends.